let us read let's read let us read Salafi women can suckle a Salafi man with a beard by the way I'm Salafi and I have a beard so I'm ready I have all the requirement and the qualification and then the Muslim they come to us and they say your Bible is corrupt I mean, do you see the stupidity? All the garbage we see in front of us. For me, by the way, I don't like to accuse the Quran to be corrupted. The reason is, if we keep saying that, the Muslims by time, they will agree. They will find that this is the only way to can escape the reality that Muhammad is a false prophet. Because then they will say, you see, okay, the Quran have mistakes. And stupid things in it because the Quran is corrupted but the original Quran was true Quran we don't want to go there we don't want to go there I want to keep the Quran to be protected so this is the Quran which is protected and those are the verses of Allah and the verses of Allah is so clear saying that Allah is a fool he entrusted the Jews to protect the book how God can be God Yet his trust was a foolish trust. How the Muslim they say Allah he knew the future, but he could not recognize that he is giving the wrong trust to the wrong people. Otherwise, we can show tons of reference and proofs that the Quran changed. There is a book of an Imam, big scholar. His name is Al Suyuti. Al Suyuti. He have endless number of quotation. He put them in his book to make it easier for people to see. Of reference about the Quran being lost and corrupt. And when the Muslim, they try to defend, let me show you an example of the defense. Here it says that Ibn Abi Kab a man his name and Abi Ibn Kaab he says how uh, how like how much how many the chapter of Al-Ahzab this is the same chapter I speak about you can do work as a pimp if you remember he said what we read now is about 70 something verses and then he continues saying and I did read it with the Prophet of Allah equal size to the chapter of the cow even longer and in it it was the verses of stoning to death a rajam and then here it says and this is lead us to understand that the chapter of ahzab was a very big chapter the same as the cow but most of it is abrogated. <laughs> you see how they try to, to now, so it's abrogated. If we go right now to the chapter of Al-Ahzab. This is the chapter 33. Let us go to the end. Look how long it is 73. Verses 73, the last one is 73. See it? Okay, wonderful. We just saw that the chapter of Al Ahzab used to be equal to the cow chapter and even longer. Let us go to the cow chapter, chapter number two. And again, we go to the last verse. This is the longest chapter in the Quran. 
Look how long it is. Very big. So look what happened now. How many verses this chapter is? Is 286. 286. How many is Al Ahzab now? Let's go to the other one. 73. So did you notice how many are lost? And then the Muslim, every one of them, he tried to fix it. Some they say, oh, most of it is abrogated. Like, or even if it's abrogated, where it is? Then they say to you, oh, don't you know that the Quran had, there's a three kind of abrogation. One of them is abrogation of recitation. Why you abrogate recitation? If you abrogate the rule, and how in the world are you saying to me, there was more than 200 verses, all of them about rules? And they are abrogated in one chapter? <laughs> so this God, he made 200 verses and he ripped them apart and he says, don't for, show me where it says that. If we calculate 286 minus 73, there's 213 verses missing in one chapter, just in one chapter. Just in one chapter, 213. And how the Muslim they try to fix it, they say Allah knows best. We can go to different hadith. Actually, there is a uh, there is a verse in the Quran. You see, the Muslim they say is the Quran preserved and blah blah. You know, we laugh, you know. But but and for me, as I said, I'm not interested to prove it not to be preserved. But uh, we, I'm sharing education with you. So in case you need it, you use it. Uh, if you remember, there is a verse in the Quran. If you go to the video of this uh, potato Uthman, he says the Quran preserved word by word, right? Just to show you a very clear proof. Chapter 36, verse number 38. So guys, by the way, which one is better? The previous broadcast or this one as a screen and sound? I think this one is better, right? I think this one is way better, is more clear, the screen is easy to see. You know, that's why I'm back to it. So, do you see what the verse is saying? The verse is saying, the sun run to its course. Say his course. I mean, have you ever heard of such? The sun runs his course. What kind of translation? What the heck is that? Let us go different translator. The sun became his now, his course. And the sun runs, runs, and on into a resting place for him. Change the translator. I mean, what the heck is this? What those people are trying? I mean, are they are they using like software to translate? Look like it. And the sun runs on its fixed course for a term. Okay. So does it say it run or it says it doesn't run? Somebody help me. 
does it say it run to a fixed course or it says it doesn't run to a fixed course this is a very important reference I'm going to share it with you and I want all of you to save it so and the Sun runs on its fixed course so this is what the Quran we have in front of us it says let us go to Ibn Kathir Ibn Kathir I need to find because you know I, I did format my computer so I need to find the page of Ibn Kathir what this page is here here now uh, what happened okay Ibn Kathir Ibn Kathir All right, we found the website that is added to the bar. So we don't need to look for it next time. All right. So in Ibn Kathir, let us show you. Oh, we closed the page by mistake. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right. So this is Ibn Kathir. Let us put it on the screen again. Chapter 36. We go to 38. I want you to take reference. I will post the link for you. Ibn Kathir is saying exactly what we were saying in that uh, uh, Quran, in the Quran they have now, the, in the popular Quran, let's say, because there's many Quran. And the sun runs into a fixed course. So it says the same, nothing changed. All right. Let us go down a little bit. And look what it says. And the sun runs with no fixed fix course for a turn. Do you see it? Do you see the opposite? Guys, did you see the opposite? So Ibn Kathir is reporting two recitation of the Quran. One is saying the sun runs to a fixed course and the other one saying and the sun runs with no fixed course for a term. How that can be? How both of them can be exist? Go back a little bit. Huh? Up, 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 a little bit. On its fixed course for a term. So the sun run to fixed course. Its fixed course beneath the throne. That's what it says. And the sun runs into a fixed course for a term. Okay. We go down a little bit, a little bit. It says, at the recitation, وَالشَّمْسُ تَجْرِي لَا مُسْتَقَرَّ لَا You see the word لَا here? لَا mean no. No. Settling place for it. And that changed everything. See, the Muslim, they, they lie, they say, but the Qur'ans are sent down in seven recitation, and they are not really different Qur'an, it's just different dialect. But this is not a dialect. This is the same dialect of Quraysh. Nothing changed. And the word la mean there is no fixed course. And that is totally the opposite of the same verse which is in the Quran of Saudi Arabia today. So which one of them is true? This is an example of their lies. Because it cannot be both. You see, they cannot say this is metaphorical. This is about the movement of the sun. And Ibn Kathir, he explained, the Prophet was riding his donkey. And he have a guy behind him. 
because you can't sit in front of Muhammad. Remember, his private part is always uh, busy. He's a prophet. Come on. So when he was sitting behind the prophet, the prophet asked him, do you know where the son goes? Abu Dhar. Abu Dhar means the father of the ants. Do you know where the son said? I said, Allah and his messengers knows best. He said, it sat under the throne of Allah. It goes and prostrate itself beneath Allah's throne. And this is additional proof that Muhammad is a fraud because he think that the sun is moving every day from point A to point B and point B is under the ass of Allah. May Allah ask you, Abdul. But now the problem is bigger because in the Quran, which we showed you in the other side, it says, and the sun runs into a fixed course. So it runs to a fixed course. But there is other reading for the Quran, which Muslim cannot dispute, says the opposite. And the sun runs with no fixed course for a term. How we can fix that? I think all the water million in the world, they cannot fix this hole which is a hole in the narrative. Do you remember Mr. Hole in the narrative? Hmm? How big this hole is? Do the sun runs to a fixed course or the sun does not run for a fixed course? How both recitation can be true? And why they lie to us, they say it's just different dialect. Yeah, all the close friends of Muhammad, they are father of something, you know. So the Abu Dhar is the father of the ant. Abu Huraira, the father of the cats. Muhammad, his last name is dog, Kilab. His wife, the daughter of Jahish, which means donkey. It's a, it's a zoo. Do we have any Muslim who have an objection? If you have an objection, don't forget to object because that would make you Muslim. We believe without understanding. I object. You object what? I don't know. Whatever you say. But it's not me who is saying that. This is Ibn Kathir. I don't object. I don't care Ibn Kathir. What Ibn Kathir? Ibn Kathir is a Jew. Actually, there's a proof that he was a Hindu. He's a Hindu from Brazil. All of Brazil are Hindus. You know, they are Hindu like, you know, the you know the thing? Abdul, do you know where Brazil? Yes, Brazil, I know where Brazil. It's just in, uh, you know, the Zimbabwe. This is where the Amazon coming, and there's the Nile River, and you know, there is uh, Euphrates. What the heck? All of those things is in Zimbabwe? You know, are you sure? Yeah, absolutely, I'm sure. You see, in the old days, when I debate Muslims, if you notice, I used to say, are you sure? These days, I'm not using this word no more. Did you ask yourself why? Because I noticed the second I say to Abdul, are you sure he knew that he is going to do, to, to, to have a big poo-poo? So they hang up, you know? So I stopped using that word because now he knew that it's time to be spanked. So I stopped using it like, are you sure? You know? And then Abdul, he says, yeah, absolutely, I'm sure. Why you are keep repeating, huh? But now they learn that when I say that word, it's mean an earthquake it's better to flee so they hang up and they leave so I stop using the are, are you sure so Muslims are you sure that the Sun does not run to a fixed course or it face to a fixed course anyone then you know if you are laughing about my geography I'm just learning from Prophet Muhammad you see Prophet Muhammad he went to heaven and he found in the heaven of Allah in up in the sky in the sky brother in the sky that Sihan wa Jihan and Nile and Euphrates are in heaven in the sky you don't believe it read it the guy he went to seven heaven in the top of a flying donkey and what he discovered 
he discovered that Sihan wa Jihan, wa the Nile River and Euphrates, they are coming from under the tree of Allah. And then you ask yourself, did Muhammad really go to heaven or he went to Ethiopia? And Nile River is in Ethiopia and Euphrates in the north of Syria, south of Turkey. How that in happen? And Sihanu and Jihan is the same. Any Abdul can tell us what happened. Did Muhammad he go to really to the heaven or Ethiopia? And then, by the way, ah, this is explain why Muhammad. You see, remember the story. There is a chapter in the Quran. It's called the chapter of the genie. The chapter of the genie. The funny, the Muslim, they say nobody can make Quran like Allah. And then you find the chapter of the genie. All the conversation is the genie talking. But anyway, if you remember, once upon the time, the prophet was a traveling. He found a group of a, of a, of a black people. In Arabic, they called them Azut, very dark, with very dark black. And brothers and sisters, do you know what those black guys did to the prophet? They start riding him. So I am thinking, maybe since Muhammad he went to Euphrates, and where sorry where the Nile River is coming from, I think this is where he met those black people, and they were naked. And they were riding Muhammad all day long. All day long. And let me give you the reference. So you can use Google Translation, peace be upon him. Just open it in browser of Google. And you can click at Google Translation and you will find the reference. A bunch of black guys, they were riding Prophet Muhammad all day long. To the point at the end of the day, he cannot move. And you know, it says Rakibu. You know Rakibu? Oh boy, I have to use my heart now. You guys, why you are doing that to me? I mean, you are forcing me to use my skills against my will. I mean, come on. That's not even fair. See, I mean, why they do that to me? Why? Is that because I'm like an Arab and I'm very like kind and nice, you know? So Rakibu, let us uh, uh, you know draw it for you. Draw it. I know, I know. All of you, you cannot wait to see my drawing. I'm born gifted, by the way. Since I was a kid, I was like one day old. You know, my mom she told me. Like I took the, uh, you know, uh, the, you know, my dad, he have a B7 and I took it and I shoot and I start drawing in the sky with the B7, you know. So like I, I'm artist since born, you know, since I was, was born, uh, I was in Abdullah, I was born uh, artistic. And this is a true story. If you don't case you don't believe me, and who cares if you believe me or not anyway. So this is a prophet Muhammad. In order to ride him, he have to go in his fore, in his legs and his feet. And the guys, those African guys, according to the story, the one I gave you in the website, they were riding him. I don't know how many of them they were riding him in the same time. This is one of them, his legs is down. This is the second one. The prophet is strong, by the way. I mean, come on. The guy, he can have six, like he have the power of 40 men. So he can imagine how many he can handle. So the hadith says in the, the, in the uh, reference we gave you, they were riding the prophet, a group of azot, which is very black people, all day long. 
The first time I had to read this, I asked myself, how in the world? How in the world? This is can be happening. And how in the world that the Muslim, they say, they filter anything is insulting to the Prophet. Remember, when the Muslim wrote, wrote the books about Muhammad, they said, like Ibn Ishaq, he said that anything is not a suitable to be written, I took it off. So this is after the filtration. A group of a black men, they rode Muhammad all day long. And they were naked. They were what? They were wearing no clothing. And this is the reference in the front of you. The book of Musnad Imam Ahmad. Let me use Google translation. Value number one, page number three, nine, nine. And here you see the story from the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. This guy, he claimed that he was with the prophet of Islam when this has happened. So there's a group of a black people. Let's see if the translation will come right. You see, they were wearing no clothes on them. Uh, yeah, the translation is silly. It's not really right, you know. But what you can do, I mean, we have to use Google. Maybe the best is to to copy that the text like line by line and uh, translate, because sometimes when you put the whole uh, page together, the uh, translation come weird. Uh, but let's see where it says they were riding him all day long. Huh. Look what it says here. This person he was terrified, the companion of Muhammad. And he wrote the Quran, by the way. This guy is a Quran writer. Or he is a reciter for the Quran. Uh, they were writing Muhammad all the ways since the morning until night. And then the prophet, he messenger, he came back. Look what happened. The messenger came back. And he was in pain because they rode him all night and all day or all day uh, where it says that they rode him I'm trying just to read this stupid translation it is uh, you go, he came with heavy pain here we go so the message of Allah he came with heavy pain almost he cannot even move because they rode him all day and for sure translation as I said is coming horrible the best way is to take that the text like few lines at the same time and pause them in Google one by one I think that is the best way to get a translation Uh, so anyway, when the Muslims, they say, uh, this is the same guy as I blocked, he is just a troll. He called himself a princess now. He was a guy, he became a female by the power of Allah. Well, I hope they will rode you, you know. Just go to the Nile River and you get what you deserve. So when somebody he says to you the Bible is corrupt, don't defend it. Say to him the Bible of Allah is corrupt. Let everybody laugh. The second you say that to a Muslim, the Muslim he will change his mind, he will change the topic, he don't want to talk about it no more. When a Muhammadan he says 
that the Christians and the Jews they change the word of Allah the Quran in chapter 6 verse number 34 chapter 10 verse number 64 says it clearly nobody can alter the word of Allah and this message was about messengers who came before Muhammad so how the Quran says nobody can change the power of the, the word of Allah and the Muslim they say no you can and if they say to you this is about the Quran well, the verse is so clear speaking about messengers before Muhammad and he did not say the Quran he says nobody can change the words of Allah is the Quran only is the word of Allah or the gospel and the Torah as Muslim they claim then we go to the verses about Allah he entrusted the Jews Allah he entrusted the Jews To do what? He entrusted the Jews to protect the Torah. Was Allah aware that his trust is a stupid? So if Allah is the one who made such a mistake, is that a mistake? Muslims, is that a good is that a mistake or a bad is that a bad decision, a mistake, a wise decision? Somebody tell me. Allah trusted the Jews to protect the Torah. He trusted specifically the rabbis and the doctors, the high scholars. Did Allah make the right decision? Any Muslim can help? The word of trust is very clear. Mean he have faith that they are good. You trust people only when you have faith you believe them you believe they are good when you trust somebody you give him your money you go to the bank you give them the money you're not even worried about it why because you trust that your money is safe but if that is not the case if you want to give it to your neighbor you will be worried about your neighbor taking the money and never show up again my friend Barahuta why you have to repeat the same thing 1,000 times? We saw it. Come on. I mean, at least say something useful. So when Allah, he say he entrusted, what about you make a comment about what I'm saying instead of repeating the same thing? You know why the Muslims say the Bible is not changed? Because we don't have four wives. Say something useful. Allah, he trusted. Allah, he made a bad decision or good decision, Muslims? So take this note, chapter 5, verse number, here we go, put it for you on the screen, 44, 44. How the stupid Allah, he trust the Jews to protect his book. Do Allah knew the future? If Allah, he knew the future and then he says, he trusted them that means his future was not right his vision of the future is false Allah do not know the future do we have any Abdul anyone have a question before we finish for today you see, because we have too many production, production, yeah, production, not too many people are joining. It's okay. You know, I can slow down. I'd like, you know, maybe don't do video tomorrow, but I prefer to do more, even if there is not enough people watching. Um, you know, doing the right thing is always a good thing. And I hope people will learn, people will take notes. And they will learn uh, he does entrust just means you gave them the responsibility for a test you know you know you uh, Somalia, Somalia I don't know I don't know you this is an answer of somebody who have a mental illness let me tell you why hmm. guys Somalia he have the answer for you you have the answer let me show you what he said. 
The answer is right there, right clear, you know? Like, I mean, come on, you cannot deny it. Ah. So look what he said. He does entrust, just means you gave them the responsibility for a test between two brackets, and they failed. But uh, uh, you know that when you use certain word, that word have a meaning you cannot say it means it just means trust is a trust there's a billion word in arabic can be used to describe what you are saying and you must then use claim that the quran is a perfect arabic so how in the world allah is using the wrong word if you want to say something else if allah he meant what you are saying he shall not use in trust. And when you say for a test, this is the most stupid test because Allah is risking his book. You see, it is my responsibility as God, not as they are Jews. Jews are people, they are a human. Isn't the Quran confirmed that all human are sinners? How you trust a sinner? You do not need to test Human being fail always. Did Allah trust the Muslims in the protection of the Quran? Give me the answer. If Allah trusted the Jews as a test, well, he should give the Quran to be trusted to the Muslims. Look what the Quran says. And this is why the Muslims did not collect the Quran. The Quran says, Inna alayna jama'uhu wa Quranahu. It is on us to collect it and recite in it. It's not for it's not on you. Chapter 75, verse number 17. It is for us to collect it it's for us to recite it. You see here they add Muhammad, that's false. There's no Muhammad there. So the Quran making it clear that the one who will collect the book is Allah. Muslims, who is the one who collected the book? Any Muslim can answer? Who is a Muslim can answer us? Who is the one who collected the Quran? Was it Allah or Muslims? including Uthman who burned the other Quran. Who is a Muslim? He have little dignity to answer. Did Allah keep his promise to collect the Quran? Uh, Thom, I just give you the reference. You are asking for tafsir. Tafsir, they will quote this book. They will quote Ibn Mas'ud. Ibn Mas'ud is a companion of the Prophet, the false prophet. So what do you mean tafsir? This is more important than tafsir book. Any Muslim can answer me. Who is the one who collected the Quran? So now we trust the Quran that Allah, he said that I will collect the Quran. Did Allah keep his promise to collect the Quran? Any Muhammadan? Did Allah keep his promise to collect the Quran? All of us, we knew that the Muslims, they start collecting the Quran after Muhammad's death. All of us, we knew that Uthman ibn Affan, he burned the Quran. He burned many Quran. And this is the weird. The Muslim, they say that uh, uh, if you burn the Quran, that's haram and they will go crazy. But the first one who burned the Quran is Uthman. So it is the Muslims who collected the Quran. And there was many Quran to the point they start burning them. And until now, there's many Quran. So when Allah, he says, it is on us to collect it. Us who? 
Who is a Muslim when I help us? My friend, Yaakov, didn't you see I have a topic? I just started answering something. Just wait. Who is a Muslim can answer? It is on us to collect the Quran. Who is talking and who is us? And did Allah collect the Quran? So do you see how the Quran failed its own promise? How you Muslim you claim that the Quran is protected and then the Quran is a promise to be collected by Allah, not by you. Who of you Muslims can tell me where we can find the Quran which is collected by Allah? Any Muhammadan? So do you see how Islam created a test and always Islam failed its own test so Allah he entrusted the Jews and the world the trust means trust it's not a test and if you say to me it's a test well that's mean Allah he do not know the result of the test because he used the word in trust so his trust was false same time if Allah he knew that the Jews are going to corrupt the book and yet he entrusted the Jews to protect the book. That means Allah intentionally decided to corrupt his own book. Do you understand? If I know that by giving you this book and I trust you to protect the book and I am God who can see tomorrow, I can see the future and I know that you will corrupt the book is it that means that I'm a partner of the corruption and I am the one who allow it and actually I'm the one who planned for it so do you see how stupid the whole thing here if you ask the Muslims can the corruption of the Quran of the Quran or the Torah or the gospel can happen without permission of Allah what the Muslim they would say they will say everything is by permission of Allah. Everything. Therefore, if there is any corruption happened, it was Allah who did it. Allah is Satan. And who is going to hurt more or get hurt more than the one who corrupt his own book? You see, I have my books. Somebody here added something to it. Who is the first one who is going to be unhappy with that? Me. This is not what I say. And if I give a book, and I convince people that this is a book of God. And then I allow people to play with my book. And I am God. Now I am misleading generations by allowing it to happen. Why? Because those people, whoever come after those people who corrupted the book, well, they believe. They are victims. They believe in the corrupted book, but for them it's not corrupted. Additional to that, why the Christians... When they come after the Jews and the disciple of Jesus did not say that the Bible, the Torah is corrupted. Why they accept it? Why the Christian and now they accept it? The story is very simple. Muhammad he could not find any proof himself. Uh, Hamoud saying, "Why it does matter to you?" You will simply deny our answer. Let me ask you, my friend. What, what do you mean? Why you? Why you? Why you? Why it's a, a matter for you? You must then keep saying that the book, the book of Allah, the Torah, is corrupted. The book of Allah is the Injil is corrupted. 
I had to take an opportunity and to laugh at the Quran and the founder of the Quran. Because if Allah, he sent a book, and then Allah, he trusted the Jews to protect the book. And then Allah, he decided not to protect the book. And then you, because of your foolishness, to come to me speaking about my book. When the whole Quran keeps saying, this is the book of Allah. So we should love at who? We should love at Allah. Look what you say. You will simply deny our answer. Who, you know, I'm not waiting for your answer. We are loving. You can you answer anyway? Allah trusted the Jews. Can you answer? You cannot. Let me ask you, why if Jesus is God, his apostle turned him? He failed as a teacher. He failed as God in your book. This is the most stupid answer. I'm just showing you now. Here we go. Your God, Allah, he entrusted the Jews. They failed him. Jesus trusted nobody. Jesus even told the one who will, de who will deny him, you will deny me. He told the one, you will betray me, you will betray me. <laughs> Your God, he trusted. And then they gave him a finger. Jesus told the guy who is going to betray him, you will betray me. It wasn't a surprise. Christian, is that correct? Is it true that Jesus, before those things happened, he told his disciples, each one of them, what he will do? Each one of them. So when we laugh, we are laughing at the religion. There's a God, he sent a book, and then he didn't want to protect his book. What's wrong with this God? So when you Muslim, you say the Bible is corrupted, we have to laugh. Because this is supposed to be the book of Allah. Your God is mentally ill. He sent the book and he decided to, to, to let the book go. Why? And not only that, if the Torah was corrupted, how many years Allah, he waited to send somebody to tell us? <laughs> was your God, Allah, taking a nap? Hmm? The Christian, the Muslim, they say that the one who corrupted the Bible is Paul. Wonderful. So Allah, he waited 600 years. And then even when, when Muhammad, he said, not a single time he mentioned Paul. Actually, the opposite. If you go to chapter 36, it says that there's a three messengers that went to the city of Antioch and those are the messengers of, of, of Jesus. They are messengers of who? Of Jesus. Allah, he sent, the verse is so clear. Allah, he sent the two messengers first. And they rejected both of them and they accused them to be liars. Then Allah, he stringed them with the third messenger. If we go and read Ibn Kathir or many Islamic books, we will find that the third messenger is Paul. <laughs> is Paul. And not only that, the Muslims' books agree that Paul, he, he saw Jesus, and even Jesus, he made him blind. Shall we go to Ibn Kathir right now and we laugh? But every single Muslim, he says, that Paul is the one who corrupted the Bible. But their stupid book says the opposite. Their stupid book says that Paul was a person who hated the Christians. He wanted to kill them. So the Messiah, he appeared to him in the way to Damascus. And then he turned to be blind. And then Paul, he prayed to the Messiah, asking for forgiveness. And then the Messiah, he forgave him, and he gave him his vision again. Shall we go read? <laughs> 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 
Let us go to the, angel, the, the English version of Ibn Kathir, which is not the same as the Arabic one. Chapter 36, verse number 14. And the Muslim, they will say, CP, this is the hadith, the narration of the story is da'if. The Mimi Hijab, it's fabricated. You remember Mimi Hijab when he spoke to me? He started reading this one. I was reading a different book. I said, you eat it. I'm quoting a different book now. <laughs> My God, he just denied man to betray him. You have to prove it. It's your God who is denying man to betray him. Isn't it you Muslims? You believe that everything in Islam is destiny? Look, 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 just to show you how stupid this cult is. A Muslim is complaining about destiny. Now you deserve to be banned. Don't come here again. I have no time for kids. Isn't it you stupid Abdul? Believe that everything is destiny of Allah? Your bad deed and your good deed is a destiny? Isn't it you Muslims? You believe that Adam, when he commits sin, it was written in the book of Allah. He destiny his fate 40 years before he created him. There's no destiny in the Bible. The only destiny in the Bible is there's heaven and hell. You can choose third option if we can call it destiny. But as long as there's a choice between two, it's not destiny. That's why Jesus says, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. So if you choose to do your own will, you're free. But you will go to hell like your prophet. So now let us go to Ibn Kathir and see what Ibn Kathir says. about this verse let us close those ones chapter 14 it's our, it's our chapter 36 verse number 14 every stupid idiot in the internet he keep attacking Paul from the Muslims then we go to their book we will find that Paul is a messenger of Allah and not only he is a messenger of Allah he is the strongest between them and he was sent to the city of Antioch. Let us read together. Where is uh, the third one? Huh. Read with me carefully. So those messengers they were sent to where to the city to the people of Antioch is that making uh, ringing a bell for you and they were the messengers of the Messiah now they are saying here the Christian they claim so we cannot take it serious the Christian claim but it says here actually this is the view of Abu potato not the Christians So he agree this is what his view and then we continue let us try to find who are they those three read carefully so we uh, uh, reinforce them with the third meaning this is now Ibn Kathir we support them and we string them with the third messenger Ibn Juraj narrated from Wahab Ibn Sulaiman from Shu'aib al-Jabi, the name of the first two is Shem'un, Simon, and the second one is Yohanna, John, and the name of the third is Bulos, which means Paul, and the city was Antioch. Do you see it? Do you see it, people? Do you see why we Arab Christian we laugh at this religion? In their TV, they insult Paul. In their book, they say Paul was a messenger of God. But look what happened now. Anyone knows what is the consequence of this stupid statement now? If Paul and John and Simon Peter, they are the messenger of God. But who is the one who sent them? Who is the one who sent them? This is Jesus. Is that correct? 
So how they are the messenger of God and Jesus is a prophet. Prophet cannot make you a messenger. He himself is a messenger. He don't have the authority to make you a prophet or a messenger. And the, the chapter there is speaking about those people doing miracles. They are doing miracles. So in order for those three to be the messengers sent by Jesus, Jesus have to be God. And not only that, do you see how important those names are? That's mean, whatever John and Peter and Paul said is very authentic, for they are chosen by God. And do you see that the Muslims agree that they were sent to the city of Antioch? Muhammad is copying the Bible. And this is where the Christian, we're called a Christian for the first time. Well, the, the Muslim, when they say they preserve, it's mean word by word. But as you see, this is a lie. Even the Quran itself saying it clearly that the Quran is not preserved. The Quran itself saying that. How is that? Here we go. Read and love. Chapter 2, verse 106 says that Allah make the Muslim forget the Quran. <laughs> and Allah will make the Muslim forget the Quran so he can send a better Quran or similar Quran. And this is why, why this happened? Because Muhammad, he cannot remember to recite the verses twice correctly. So in order to give himself excuse, he said, don't worry. If Allah, look look at the first translation, if we super, supersede any verses, why Allah want to supersede any verses? Or cause it to be forgotten? Why Allah want to cause the Quran to be forgotten? I mean, have you ever heard of somebody? He sent a book and he caused it to forget his book? Imagine Jesus he says something to the in the morning, and at night he says to you, forget it. Can you believe it? And not only that, he asks you to forget it, and he says to you, oh, I'm going to make something similar for you. Have you ever heard of a stupid thing like this? So you have a house from three bedroom. Allah, He will burn it for you, and Allah will say to you, "I will build something similar." So why you why you why you destroy the first house if the second house would be the same? And there's more garbage in this verse. This is this verse, by the way, is a priceless. And it, for for very one word is a priceless. Do you see the word better? Do you see it? How in the world that there is a God He can write better book than His book? Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? Supposedly, Allah is God. And the one is talking is Allah. Okay, wonderful. How in the world Allah is going to write a book better than his book? Anyone can explain? The word better mean that Allah, he admit that his Quran is worse and there is better. And then you ask yourself, was Allah in the state of non-perfection when he wrote the first book? Do you understand what I'm saying? This is a chapter 2 verse 106. 
if there is better, Allah is the one who's talking. This is the, and you see, this is why I don't, I don't I, when the Muslim is say the Quran is preserved, I like that because then we can laugh more. The Muslim, they cannot say this is wrong, uh, somebody added, uh, no, it's preserved, I love it. But this is alone to prove to me that this is cannot be from God. Can Allah speak better than Allah? Can Allah write better than Allah? If Allah is the one who made the first Quran, how Allah is going to make better Quran than the first Quran? This is why we say Islam is lovable. This is cannot be God speaking. This is stupid. You know, this is a guy saying stupid things. You see, I can say to you, I will write a better book than my previous book, which means I will give it more effort. I will study harder. I will research more. Try to give more reference. It can happen because a human being can improve himself. And you know, he gets smarter or edu more education or more skills or more skills in writing. But we are talking about the perfect God. So if this is the scenario that Allah is going to write a book better than the previous book, that means Allah was not perfect when he wrote his first book. And he is not going to write a perfect book tomorrow too. Why? Because it is just better. Not the best. Better is a word you use to elevate one upon the other one. Is that correct? That means the first Quran was not equal to the better Quran. Then how in the world Allah he wrote a Quran which is not good? This is why we love. Can you show proof for only one God? Why only one? Uh, Big Shama, hey, my friend, I don't care really if the God is one or two or five or seven. That is not really will make any different. Show you a proof about what? If there is somebody believe in seven gods, ten God, twenty gods, and they all exist, then he's right, and you are wrong. So when people like you know Muslims, they focus too much about the number, like one God. We believe in one God, and think he think when he says such a word, like he is a supreme, he is a strong in the position. For me, it is laughable, because it doesn't matter really if it's one or two or three or five or seven or whatever. If they are exist, they are exist. Can I change the number, guys? Do you understand what I'm saying? We don't accept God because he's one. What if he's seven? What if, he, what if there's a million God? We don't have a choice to, you know, they are God. <laughs> the question is, are they true or not? And I think our friend here is a, is a Hindu. So this is not the challenge for any one of us. Because who care about the number? Numbers doesn't make you better, less or more. God have a qualification. And his first qualification is his ability. So if you can bring me a million God, and they can create universe like this, and they can create a humans and animals and trees, well, they are God then. So the challenge a human being he face is not about the numbers of God. Like you as a Hindu, as I heard Sadhguru, he said that Hindus, they believe they have a 35 million God. 35 million. 
the number for me is weird and like why they stop with number 35 but you can say the same why you stop number number one but it's not really the number what will make the god of hinduism is false it is the belief itself like you have a temple for rats you have uh, you know uh, things doesn't make sense like you know in reincarnation the good person you know if you are a bad person you will come as a bad animal there's a bad animal and good animal animal is an animal and then we find that there is hindus they worship gods who they are rats a god become a rat i thought if you have a good karma you will turn to be a better creature so how god become a rat so when we reject hinduism we don't reject it because of the 35 million god but we reject it because nothing makes sense there the vegetarian the vegetation and etc you know like do you know that even plants are not vegeta vegetarian do you know that even plants they eat beef if you don't believe me get some meat and bury it under your tomato and you will see how the tomato will go crazy how the plant will flourish So Hinduism is a philosophy, it's not really anything except philosophy, and philosophy with no logic. Islam is, on the other hand, I believe it took a lot of things from, from the Hindus. As an example, a Hindu person, he believes in a bad karma and a good karma, correct? Is that correct? Okay. If a person he is a you know he have a bad karma in life, karma mean action. He will come in the coming life as lower creature. Lower creature. If he is a person have a good karma he will come in a better creature Muhammadi adopted the same teaching of the Hindus Muhammad believed in reincarnation of a human being from human to animals and from animals to human look what Muhammadi said This hadith we cannot find it in English. Let us find 